You know, from the blue bonnet to the pecan tree and even the nine-banded armadillo, there are a lot of things uniquely that uniquely represent Texas, like, like the state reptile, the Texas horned lizard. Now, while it's hard to miss blue bonnets lining the highway in the spring, the horned lizard has suffered a steady population decline in the last 60 years. But right now, there's work being done to reverse it. Earlier this month, Texas Parks and Wildlife, with help from several zoos, including Fort Worth and Dallas, released baby horned lizards into the wild. The goal? Create a self-sustaining population. And now you can help, too. In this week's Climate Connection, we take you to Eastland County, where the lizard is celebrated year-round. For many of those in the Metroplex, this isn't the horned lizard they know. It's this one, the mascot of Texas Christian University. It is the state reptile, but it no longer lives in this area. For longtime residents, they are a childhood memory. At that time, we had horned lizards in our backyards. They just, they sit there, they look at you. They're, you can you can get up close to them, um, and you just have a connection with them. Are you ready to go, yeah. They look like little miniature dinosaurs, and they're still alive today. There is a generation of North Texans that have never seen a horned lizard in their neighborhood. Over the last 40 years, Native Prairie, where the animals call home, filled up with homes and roads. As people moved in, they moved west, and their legend grew. The fascination for this strange, small creature started with Lewis and Clark. It started their expedition in, in 1803 from St. Louis. The first animal they sent to Thomas Jefferson was a Texas horn lizard. The press back east immediately misnamed it as a horned frog. It's been a source of confusion since. Make no mistake, these are lizards, not amphibians. The love of these reptiles goes way back in history, specifically here at the Eastland County Courthouse and the famous story of Old Rip. As the story goes, a teenage boy put a horned lizard in the cornerstone of the courthouse under construction. Almost 40 years later, in 1928, when the cornerstone was unsealed, there was a living, breathing horned lizard inside. They named him Old Rip. His story lives at the top of the courthouse steps. And that's the frog over there, embalmed, and we have treaded on that ever since. Old Rip's fame has spanned the decades with local festivals and parades named in his honor. In 1928, even President Calvin Coolidge got to see Old Rip in person. But Eastland residents? In this century, they haven't seen an actual horned lizard living here at all. They disappeared in the 80s. Dusty Rhodes earned a doctorate at TCU as an expert on the species. Horn lizards are a prairie species, okay. and we killed the prairie. They are the first to leave and the last to return in a prairie habitat. If you have horn lizards, you also have quail, you ha also have road runners. So the habitat supports, the horn lizard is the habitat that supports a lot of other species. The Horned Lizard Conservation Society is working to find them a home amongst humans by creating pockets of wildlife linked together through parks, trails, and even backyards. Everybody's responsibility to make sure that these animals and all wildlife has habitat that they can you know, move around in. And so Rhodes spent years developing a way for you to recreate that habitat, and it comes in a package. Tell me the history of this. Now, this is how I found you. Uh, yeah. I was handed this, and I turned it over. I went, oh, I'm doing a story on this. Uh, <laughs> how old is this product? Came out this year. The first 100 pounds went to Willie Nelson's farm. This seed mixture is complicated. So it's got 31 different native Texas grasses and 43 different wildflowers in it. The mixture is designed to establish the main food for horned lizards. They eat a lot of ants, as I was saying. They eat a lot of termites, they eat a lot of uh, pollinators, like native bees and beetles. You can buy this and grow it in a 100 square foot plot in the corner of your property. Then, hopefully, you'll have your own story to tell one day about our state reptile. And as far as the story of Old Rip, the 
40-year-old lizard found still alive in the courthouse cornerstone in 1928? That tale might be a little tall. Uh, what is the lifespan uh, of a horned lizard? An old horned lizard, a ripe old horned lizard, is one that gets about seven or eight years. Old Rip, a Texas story from the past about a lizard needing a home in the future. Wow. That, uh, I didn't know any of that stuff. Neither did I. I'm, I'm sitting an, here I'm thinking this is North Texan. You back got in high school history. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah. no, really, I, I, I had no idea. I really thought that there was a horned frog, but clearly you clarified it all for us. It's a lizard. It's a lizard. Yeah. Uh, and it camouflages, like, you know, perfectly with right. everything. Yeah, it, it's a prairie native. Yeah. And I guess, you know, the main point is, is that they are like the first to leave and the last to show back up mm. if they lose a prairie mm -hmm. a habitat because they're like what it's called, what's called a bellwether species. So if, if you see them, you have a real healthy prairie. Well, Good to know. It's a great yeah. idea what they're doing, trying to bring back some of those prairies to bring back the habitats. You'll find it. that seed in a lot of stores around okay. here, a lot of garden right. centers. So, All yeah. right, and our thanks to Jake Shannon for that beautiful photography. And yeah. editing, by yeah. the way. Yeah. He edited this man. <laughs> if you have any questions or uh, have something you'd like us to look into, email the first alert meteorologist at Climate Connection at KDKTVT.com. Really cool story. So thanks, well Jeff. done, Jeff. Thank you.